Another of our amazing workshops here teaching you how to be a better creator, how to get started. This one in particular I'm super psyched about because it's going to help you learn how to be creative and it's going to jumpstart your creativity. It's going to help you figure out how and what to create and what to do. And I am so excited to have Jamie Lim here. Jamie, getting started on content creation, take it away. Thank you, Jim. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jamie. I'm a content creator. I do stuff on like productivity, self-development, as well as career tips. Um, and yeah, today I'm going to just share a little bit more on like how to get started on content creation. Oh, I forgot to press. Can you help me press record on my camera? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Wait, is it even on? <laughs> thanks, thanks. OK, let's start. So I think um, I really want to throw a question out to all of you um, because this was a question that was asked to me as a kid, right? Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Anyone? Really? <laughs> Dream job. But <laughs> oh, Tai Tai astronaut, Tai Tai. Okay, three votes for Tai Tai. Three votes for. <laughs> Content creator. <laughs> I wanted to be a chicken rice seller, guys. <laughs> really, I, I love chicken rice, clearly. And um, yeah, it's just something about, I think, the, the guy chopping the chicken. Like, and it was very swift, right, in the way he was doing it. And of course, I love chicken rice, so I just wanted to be around it all day. But you know, I think if you ask this question to people uh, or kids in general uh, in, in this day and age, um, the answers are very different, right? So actually 75% of kids now uh, between the age of 6 and 17 say they want to be YouTubers or TikTokers, right? Um, and, but it's very interesting to see that in a survey that was um, done this year, right, um, a third of folks actually said that, you know, they also want to be a YouTuber or a TikToker. Um, and these, this survey was done with millennials and Gen Zs as well. So, Clearly, it's not a trend, it's only with the kids. Um, it's also something that adults are thinking about. So, I also wanted to understand a little bit more about, you know, why is it such an interesting um, area to be in? What, what is it do I personally find as interesting uh, for me to want to jump into this as a career, right? Um, so, I dug down, I dug deep a little bit, and then... Um, I came out with like these four factors, um, which is first, I think being able to express myself like creativity, uh, creative, creative, creatively, oh my goodness, <laughs> um, as well as like being able to talk about my passion. I think that was something that was pretty interesting, which also talks a little bit about self-expression, being able to do that freely, right? Being able to um, have, yeah, just, just put my thoughts out into the world. Other things will be like, I think, not only for me, but um, in general, people desire the the fame and the fortune of it, and of course, the potential money opportunities that come with it is is of course exponential when you get to that point. So that's why I said now. Actually, yesteryear was maybe the best time to start creating content, but the next best time to do it is now, right? Um, so why why is now the best time to start creating content? And that's why we're all here. You know, we talk a lot about the creator economy, right? Um, there's $104.2 billion running around this economy right now. And there have never been more creators in the world, like 200 million creators. And that number is still growing exponentially every day. And I think personally, for personally, from my own experience, um, it's really helped me to boost my brand very authentically, especially in the area of... Um, like if you choose a certain niche, uh, like I was in HR, right? So I feel like talking about this, sharing about what I've learned um, has just, um, and uh, sharing about it consistently has brought people to me to say like, oh, um, Jamie, uh, you know, Jamie knows things about HR and um, therefore people associate me with being a thought leader in that certain niche. The next thing to me is um, I don't look at content creation as only as a way, um, as a creative outlet. I also look at it um, as a form of um, business. Um, with um, I love the fact that I'm able to really leverage the internet to kind of um, build an entrepreneurial business, um, really 
maybe I'm a bit lazy in the way I look at things, but um, I how I look at it is, you know, I create one video, right? Um, people ask me a lot about, for example, negotiating my salary. How, how, do, how do I do it? What are the best practices, right? Um, it's come to a point where people ask me so many times, I'm like, I'm just going to make a video on it, right? I made a video on it, I posted it online. It's working for me throughout, when I'm sleeping, when I'm eating. And the best thing is that I don't ever have to, you know, talk about it again. I'm just like, go watch my video. Everything is there. Resources are there. Go check it out. And yeah, last but not least, I think it creates another source of um, a passive income, right? Um, which is now a side hustle for me, but eventually could lead to a, a way to escape the corporate life, um, you know, escape the nine to five. And I think what I really value is having that autonomy and flexibility to be able to work wherever I want, being able to control when I work and, and how I work. And um, it's a very big appeal to me. So, yeah, um, now we know we're like, okay, uh, we're all excited to uh, get started on content creation, right? Um, so the next bit is, I ha when we start thinking about content creation, what are some of the things that um, we should really be thinking about? So I've broken it down into four sort of pillars. Um, mindset, the, con the mindset, which is like, yeah, what kind of things should I be thinking about? Or how should I set myself up mentally um, to, you know, start creating content? And um, then we talk about the content itself. How do we generate ideas, um, you know, what kind of content shall I be doing, things like that. Um, the technical stuff, right? Cameras, audio, lighting, what should we be thinking about? And lastly, just wanted to share a bit of the underrated stuff that I thought was not important, but actually is quite important. So let's dive a bit into mindset. Um, one thing that I re really resonated with me was the beginner's mindset, right? Um, I think going into anything and having this mindset of, yeah, I'm a beginner, I'm here to learn, um, just being very open to knowing what I should be learning. And even as you progress through the levels, really learning about, or about being humble enough to um, just learn from experts anywhere, right? Um, one thing also I think is um, you really don't have to be an expert um, to share and learn things. Um, I think a great way I thought about it was... Um, you know, folks who are like, I'm, I'm nowhere near like the, the million uh, mark, million subscriber mark, right? But wh where I feel I can add value to peers who are facing the same struggles, um, I probably will be able to understand their struggles a little bit more. Um, and therefore, I'll be able to help them a little bit more where someone who is maybe in the, you know, super, super, super high subscriber count might not remember how... Um, how do I cut a video, for example, right? Um, so that's a bit on the beginner's mindset. Next thing um, on the start, I would say focus a lot more on your quantity, more than the quality, just at the start, right? The most important thing is to be able to churn out content at a really consistent rate. Like consistency is key. Actually, in, in everything we do, consistency is key. But um, this is also the case for video because once you start churning out things consistently, people will remember you, people will remember your face, what you talk about, um, you know, what you, um, yeah, what, what, what they associate you with what you are talking about as well, right? Um, so for me, people associate me with like career tips and, and like negotiating salaries and things like that. Um, as a start, I would say, of course, now, uh, Vertical, plat vertical videos and platforms are really, really big, right? So definitely, I would say if you're thinking about it, start with TikTok because it's a really good way to grow. Um, it's a good way to start off without being too overwhelmed as well, right? Um, it's easy. You can edit in app. You can edit on CapCut. Um, it's just a very low entry to uh, low barrier in terms of entry. So that's something you can kind of think about. And then um, slowly as you grow, slowly as you get used to it, you can start repurposing this vertical video to like Instagram Reels or to YouTube Shorts, for example. Um, but start with one platform, start being very consistent with it first, and then you can kind of expand out from there. Okay, still a little bit more on mindset. Um, Really, I think the 1% rule is something that I hold, <laughs> I, I have followed very, very dearly. Like, if, um, I'm not sure if it, all of you have read uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear, really, really good book. 
Basically, it says if you get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better than you were um, you know, by the time you're done. And I apply this to all the videos I upload. Basically, uh, with every upload, I try to improve something. With one video, I improve my audio, right? With one video, I improve my lighting, and the other, I improve with, I don't know, putting captions on, things like that. Um, and you do see the progression with each video that you do. Um, it does get better, and, and by the time, and when I look back at my first video, I, I had to resist the urge to cringe. <laughs> but it's great, it's great. It's, it's, it shows that you have made progress, right? Um, Last but not least for mindset, I think the element of fun is very, very important, right? Um, another great uh, speaker, Simon Sinek, he says, working hard for something we don't care about is stress, but working for something we love is called passion. Um, my partner that day, was like, I was, it was like 11, 12 p.m. and I was still editing. She's like, why are you still editing? Why are you still working? I'm like, I'm not working. It's, it's so fun. I, I don't want to stop, you know? So I think in everything you do, make sure you can have that element of fun so it doesn't feel tiresome or, or boring or anything like that. So that's a bit on the mindset. Now we go a bit into content, right? Um, things that, have you ever heard the phrase, the richest are in the niches or niches? <laughs> We're going to have that argument. <laughs> um, but there is, there's truth in that, right? Because... Think about our behavior as consumers or when we're looking at YouTube or we're looking at TikTok where we're searching questions, right? How do we go about it? We, we look for a question on, on, on YouTube or TikTok and then it brings you to that certain creator who's answering your questions. From then on, then you, you maybe discover the creator who's creating about the same things and then you know, it all flows back to that person being a thought leader and things like that. So definitely find your niche. Um, don't talk about something you don't find interesting, if not, it's going to drain you as well. Um, even if it's trending or anything like that, um, stick to something you really enjoy. Next bit, really defining your target audience, right? Um, your audience is everything. Um, and I know you all talk a lot about the algorithm, how it works, algorithms change all the time, but um, replace the word algorithm with audience and um, and I think that solves like really like 90% of the problem. I think you really need to understand your audience. Like what questions uh, are they asking? What do they want to know? What do they know? And um, you know, what do they really want to learn? So when I really, def when I dug deep down and tried to understand who was my target audience, did a couple of exercises, um, I really understood that I was trying to help a younger version of me. And that really helped me craft, you know, what I was um, trying to, like all the content that I do, it's crafted towards that. I'm talking to like a young Jamie, like who's a bit lost in life, <laughs> that sort of thing. And the next bit on idea generation. Um, so I stole this slide from one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. He's called Ali Abdal, productivity guru, master. Um, I did his course uh, a while back. It's called Part-Time YouTuber Academy. Really cool stuff. But I think there were a lot of questions on like, how do I generate ideas, right? How do I come up with these sort of things? Um, and this is one exercise that came up, which um, basically is like, hey, um, figure out what your audience wants, figure out what you can teach, and then from there kind of like break it down into subtopics. And um, you can take a photo of this, but also um, I have a link to the deck. So anytime you guys want to refer to it, you can refer to it uh, after the session. Okay, we move on to the exciting piece. I, I, I like gear a lot. Um, my partner will tell you I spent a, a bomb on gear, so don't be like me. Um, gear is really not the sole factor that makes your videos look good. So let me show you some examples. That was my first YouTube video. And that was my latest YouTube video. So clearly you can see a difference in lighting, the way I put the plants. I mean, in this one, you could see... <laughs> My aircon controller and my sushi magnets. Um, you know, it's, it's just, again, the 1% rule, right? How did I get from here um, to here, right? Another example, that was my, one of my first shots, and this was maybe my latest shot. Um, again, to do with lighting and, and camera and placement, like, that plant is not there. My, co my coffee machine is there. <laughs> but I purposely put the plant there for that greenery. And even, you see that, little stormtrooper there, it's really to add 
that level of like just that extra detail or that extra touch, which I think my audience would appreciate. So I would say if you are interested in starting to create, start with the camera you have. Everyone has a great one in their pocket. Use your phone first. Um, and I would say maybe st start doing like at least five videos before you start investing into an expensive camera, right? Gear can be very expensive nowadays. And even if you get the best gear, even if you, um, you know, buy the most expensive camera, if you don't know how to use it, it's not going to work for you. Next thing, if you would, um, if you want to upgrade, I would say the next most important thing is to upgrade your audio. Always get a mic. Like even now I'm doing a YouTube live, I have a wireless mic here because if the audio is crap, people will actually click off from the view. So if you want to invest, the first thing to do is invest in your audio. Um, next thing would be lighting and stabilization, right? Uh, I would say invest in a very cheap soft box. Um, I think I saw some, you can buy a cheap soft box for like 45 bucks on Shopee. Um, or you can do a lantern or actually when I started I just used uh, the free window light <laughs> from like 9 to 11 a.m. or like um, sunset hours are pretty good as well. Um, usually if you, you need a diffusion curtain or so, so I would say use your day curtain or you can go to Ikea and buy a shower sheet <laughs> and then I put it across something and then you get that very big um, light diffusion. And uh, yes, get a tripod because uh, the last time when I started with my phone, um, I had to balance it on a lot of different things. My phone fell once, had to reshoot the whole thing. And um, this was actually one of my first setups. <laughs> um, you can see I was desperately stacking box on top of box, just making sure it was okay. I had a pancake light, which um, actually resulted, I think, in, I think in it looking something like this. <laughs> Which, again, you see, I, I had the setup, I had the light, but it was just not right. Like, like it was just, I tried, right, with the yellow and the blue lights and the plant. <laughs> but um, that's why I say the 1% rule. You just get better every time you iterate every time. And um, yeah, you'll see that things really slowly will get better. And you learn and you tweak and you go from there. And yeah, behind the scenes is always quite messy. <laughs> I put together a list of um, stuff that um, you could buy um, and in terms of like, yeah, so if you're really just exploring, maybe just think about getting a microphone as well as a tripod. Again, window light is free and I assume you have a phone. Um, it'll only cost you 110 bucks to really start. And then if you want to go further down into that, um, yeah, the, of course the price increases a lot, but it's because the cameras um, increase in price a lot more. Um, I have a lot of this gear. Again, don't do what I did <laughs> and go crazy on gear. Um, but uh, it's also accumulated over the years, right? Like I've started doing content for like three years or so. So I've just bought all this uh, over time. And and I'm also, a, I, I like this kind of stuff. I love gear. So <laughs> Okay, the underrated stuff. Um, really stuff I didn't know would be important but really really is number one is the community and i think in this um this event we've spoken a ton about community right um i think not only talking about the audience you build um, interacting with them making sure you know them um, but also surrounding yourself with with folks who are like-minded folks who understand what you are going through um and and yeah, they'll be there to help you like during this time here um, on Creator World. I've met so many people, so many different creators who like, honestly, even at the beginning of this, they were helping me figure out my TikTok stand and like, and, and figuring out the TikTok app to, to record this live. So like every, you know, it really, really helps um, to have support in that sense. But also um, you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. So I think, um, yeah, make sure your, your family and friends and all that are supportive and, you know, you'll go really, really far. Um, the next bit is a little bit on, like, financial security. Um, I think, you know, I think it, for some people, for me, it's a dream to do this full-time, right? But before kind of, like, taking that leap to do it uh, full-time, you really need to make sure you're able to commit to your adulting uh, stuff. Um, 
and um, yeah, just make sure you have a financial uh, role plan. Like for example, make sure you have savings before you really want to do this full time, right? Um, just to make sure you're able to take care of yourself. And last but not least, um, health is wealth. I'm very, very big advocate of health. Um, exercise, make sure you get enough sleep, drink enough water. And uh, because without your health, you will not, if your health deteriorates, you will not be thinking about content creation. You will be thinking about your health. I think that's it. Um, so yeah, I mean, hope you all start creating content today. And um, if you all need to connect, there's a QR code here. And the link to the deck is also here. So yeah, thank you very much. And um, you want to do some yeah. questions? Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. a Q&A. Nicely done, by the way. Like, oops. Yeah. By the way, I love that it's friends and dog. <laughs> uh, dog is very cute. And as a fellow gearhead, I can totally relate. Uh, I have way too much gear. Um, but it's fun. It is, it's it fun. Is. Opening up a new piece of gear is like heaven. All right, who's got a question? Anybody? I mean, that was a lot of stuff dumped on you. Um, who has a... Uh, a piece of gear that they really like. Let's, let's geek out on gear for a minute. It was a piece of gear that you're like, this is the one piece of gear that I, I think you should get or that I really like. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, all right, here we go. Gear question, okay? And this is a, this is a beginner's gear question. If I'm recording on an iPhone or an Android phone, what is the best video app to use? No disrespect to TikTok, um, but your native video app is absolutely shonky. Barely works, um, but it's a marvelous platform, but the audio is out of sync. So what is a good app to use? Uh, sometimes I use, um, honestly, sometimes I just use the, the, the video app, the native video app itself. Uh, the video recording camera app thingy. Um, but I think what always it changes is um, the exposure. So sometimes when you move around with it, right, the exposure, exposure just changes with the light. So uh, one thing I do is I kind of, uh, I need to press down on, 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 your cell, uh, on the image um, and lock your exposure so things will kind of stop moving. Um, but I think, I'm not, I, I forgot the app name. But there is an app where you can basically switch your phone off um, automatic settings and go more into manual settings. So you're able to tweak the, the shutter speed, the ISO, and um, things like that, and the aperture as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I forgot. I'll, I'll come back to you on the name. I can Google it later. Anybody else have any uh, video recording app suggestions for either Android or iPhone to use instead of TikTok? Anybody using something they like? Cap cut. <laughs> you use Vine? <laughs> oh, a little OG right there. All right, I love that. You had a question, right? I'm going to pass this like this. Uh, Jamie, so uh, now they have, there, there are a lot of platforms for you to do live, right? From Reels, from TikTok. So how you decide which platform that suitable for you? And like for now, you use TikTok Live. Why not? Reels or YouTube Live. So, so for me, um, I decided with TikTok. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, I decided with TikTok because my audience reach is the biggest there for now. So naturally, I'll kind of like go with that. And, and that was the only thing that kind of like powered uh, my decision. Um, if I could, I would do all three at once, but I don't have enough phones. <laughs> so um, that's why I just went with, with one. Yeah. That answers your question. Cool. Uh, question over here. Hi. Um, what's the biggest myth or mis myth conception, misconception you see amongst new emerging creators or aspiring creators? I think it's the gear a bit like, oh, I need to buy the best camera, I need to buy the one with the best lens and all that. And, and automatically somehow, um, you know, my, my picture will look good or my content will look good or my audience will grow exponentially. Um, but as you can see from the terrible photos, that <laughs> clearly that's not true. Um, so I think gear is, is, is a really, really big one. Um, can't, Nothing else comes to the top of my mind. I have a question sure. for you just on lighting because you were talking about using the window and then you said get a, uh, uh, get a shower curtain. Was that to put over the window so that it diffuses the light a little bit? Yeah, usually um, I didn't buy a shower curtain, but um, usually I, I don't know if it's... Well, in Singapore, they have the, the blackout curtain and then they have the day curtain, right? I find that uh, I always use the day curtain because it acts as kind of like a P 
piece of diffusion between me and the sun. And also, um, the timing is quite important. So just really make sure you're filming between 9 to 11 or 5 to like 7 or 8. So it's not harsh sunlights that, that comes onto you. But um, even with that, I still make sure I do a little bit of color grading here and there just to make sure um, I don't look very yellow. I remember at one point of time, I, 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 I was in a room where the lights were really yellow. So it, I, I just, I didn't have a choice. I had to film there. So um, that's where post-production comes in and color grading really helps. Um, but I, I'm, in, <laughs> I'm not an expert in color grading. I just tweak it and I'm like, okay, I, I think I look my normal color. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I go from there. Yeah, ask that for myself, actually, because I have a big window that I shoot in front of, but I also have a, uh, you know, I have a shower curtain that's white that it comes through. And I, have some, I put it up sometimes, sometimes not, but now I know I'm going to do that and give it a try. And also, I didn't know about the time of day, but that's a really good thing. I want to play around with that, too. Part of me for getting 1% better with every video, uh, which I think is amazing advice. Uh, anybody else have, you can come in. We're just doing Q&A. Q&A with Jamie. Um, anybody else have any questions? I've got a question over here. There. What sort of post-production uh, stuff do you do? And is it just for YouTube videos? Or do you also post-produce all your other videos? Um, yeah, so post-production-wise, I'm a one-woman show. So um, because I repurpose my stuff a lot to LinkedIn, to Shorts, to Instagram, and to um, TikTok, right? Um, I know every platform is very particular about the watermark. So I just make sure I have one blank piece and then I will individually go and post to each of, of that. And then um, like, I think if you see like my, um, some of the, okay, this is not working. Some of the photos that I did, uh, like that one, specifically this is for TikTok. But for YouTube, it changes to a YouTube logo and, and all that. So small things like that, I'm a little bit fussy in that way. Um, but small things like that, I feel like my audience would appreciate as well. Um, Subtitles, something very important. Um, like some apps make it easy, like TikTok makes it easy to, to do. They have the, the like AI thing for you to do it. You have to go in and edit a little bit. Um, YouTube, I still have to go in. Uh, I have I subscribe to this thing called Subly and um, basically they help you uh, come up with the, the captions as well. There are a lot of different places that can do that. Um, Post-production, what else? Marketing, yeah, marketing is a tough one for me. Uh, I think I spent one hour marketing my stuff out. I was, I was really tired by the end of it. Um, but yeah, just making sure you have like the right captions, the right hashtags. Even when I post to YouTube, right? Um, am I tagging the right things? Um, even for TikTok, I need to make sure I have the right hashtags in as well. Um, but other than that, I mean, before all that, it's all the editing and stuff, which I, I, I love editing. I know some people are like, oh, editing, but I really love it. Like, I think that day I added a fart sound into my video, and I was very happy <laughs> with it. Um, like, it brings me a bit, a, a lot of joy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so overall, it's been a very interesting process. But um, yeah, pr post-production is, is a big part of it, and marketing is a really, really huge part of it. So I think definitely don't neglect that bit about I save like... 20% of my energy just, just to make sure um, I market it out. I market it on the right day. I market it at the right time, even. Um, and there are tools and apps to let you know when is a good time to market it for your audience specifically as well. Yeah. Cool, good. Other questions? I, oh, go ahead. How long do you take to edit uh, a YouTube video? Oh, it depends. Um, Nowadays, for my shots, I can edit it within two, three hours. Yeah, but again, I'm very fussy. So if you hear a lot of sound effects, a lot of typing effects, uh, it's because I like to make sure it's, it's all done. Um, I haven't got to the point where I can do very scrappy videos yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, but if it's a longer YouTube video, um, it could be over a few days, I think two to three days of, of editing and just making sure the cut is right. Um, I'm just very, I just really want to make sure, like if I keep watching it over again, I just really want to make sure that whatever is in there, right, it makes sense for my audience. I don't want to add in anything too irrelevant for them as well. So it has to make sense for them. It's really all about the audience. What value do they get, gain out of it? Yeah, but I, I try to limit, like if I do it, if I edit for one week, I'm like, no, 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 no. over time. <laughs> don't spend too much time on, on one thing. Did you tell us what editor you use? What are you using? Final Cut Pro. Final Cut. Okay. Everything is fi from Final uh, it's Cut all Pro. All Final Cut Pro. Um, you guys are making me work over here. All right, one side to the other. No, it's all right. 
I, I, I double header. What's the um, hardest part about being a creator, and then what's the most rewarding part? What's the? Um, I think the hardest part is being um, like a one person show for now. Um, there are parts of it where I find quite tiring. Like marketing to me is very tiring. It's difficult, right? Um, but I still have to do it anyway. Um, but I'm learning things every day which are fascinating to me, like thumbnails. How do you do a good thumbnail? And how do you do a catchy title that is clickbaity, but you know you still provide value to to people, right? So um, yeah, I, I really enjoy the overall process. I think um, I spoke about having fun, right? This whole journey for me has just been fun. It hasn't been boring. It hasn't been like, oh, I don't, I don't dread it. I wake up like, ha, oh, I get to edit that sort of feeling. So I really like that. Um, I think the next bit for me would um, maybe to be to explore hiring someone. Um, and it's something I'm a bit hesitant about because I think it's the, the control you don't dare to let go of. And like, this person can't edit as well as me. It's not the style I like, that sort of thing. So I think... That is why I, um, sometimes I, I, I struggle with, should I do it, should I not do it? And, you know, I, I'm nowhere near the million subscriber mark, right? Should I invest in hiring someone now? Am, am, I, am I ready to hire someone now? Is it worth that investment? So these sort of things, I think they're a bit hard and like always going through my mind. And of course, you have the normal things like views, right? Um, how does it affect me as a person? Now I've learned to just post and ignore for like a couple of days and I go back I'm like ah oh, okay it's doing okay then nah, nah, I'm okay but I think I will just want to keep posting keep being consistent and when I see the growth going slowly and I know things are going okay so I I don't aim for virality or anything like that I really aim more for slow consistent growth I'm sorry if I, you already mentioned this we were a little bit late coming in but is there a creator you look up to who's a good example of what you've been talking about a creator a creator I love uh, I have three very significant ones in my life. Oh, well, okay. Um, so number one's Ali Abdal. Um, he's a productivity creator. Whoa, love him, love his stuff. Um, I think I learned eighty percent of the stuff I talked about maybe from him in terms of mindset, looking at YouTube or TikTok as a business, right? Um, so Ali Abdal. Second one is Matt Diavella. Don't know if you all have heard about him as well. He's very big into minimalism, into um, and I love the way he. Um, story tells is is amazing. Like and the amount of effort he puts into like do one shot um, is cool. They they both have filmmaking courses. I've taken both of them, um, but it's fascinating to see how it's a little bit different, but yet they still come across in the um, productivity or self development genre, which is uh, the kind of genre I'm going for from as well. And the last one is this guy called Nicholas Crystal. I don't know if anyone knows about him, but he's an incredible filmmaker as well. Um, he does self-development stuff as well. <laughs> no surprises. But um, it's very cinematic. Like, he travels the world and he does all these amazing drone shots. Um, and, like, by the end of the video, I'm just like, wow, I'm so inspired by, by this. Um, and I think I'm trying to move towards that. It's not an easy journey, but, um, yeah, these are the three that I really, really admire and I'm trying to learn from them as I go through my content cre creator journey.